Here are the seven things you better know about market cap. And the first thing you must know is, what is market cap? Market cap is a shorthand for market capitalization. And it refers to how much a company is worth as determined by the stock market. Now, mathematically, it's determined by taking the total market value of all outstanding shares. So to calculate a company's market cap, you just multiply the number of outstanding shares by the current share value price. So here's a quick example. If I take a look at Abercrombie & Fitch uh, company, stock symbol ANF, and I see that the market cap is $8.63 million, and I know the share price is $17.09 per share, well then I can easily calculate the number of outstanding shares. I just take 863,146,000 divided by the 17.08, the current market price of the shares, is approximately 50.5 million outstanding shares. And we can verify this by taking a look at the statistics. Scrolling down we can see the outstanding shares is 50.5 million. The second thing you need to know about market cap or what are the ranges? Market cap ranges refer to how company stocks are classified relative to the market capitalization of the company. Companies that are referred to as mega caps have a market capitalization of $200 billion or more. Large cap stocks have a market capitalization of between $10 billion and $200 billion. Next, mid cap stocks have a market capitalization between $2 billion and $10 billion. Small cap stocks have a market capitalization between $300 million and $2 billion. And the last category is for micro cap stocks which have a market capitalization between $50 million and $300 million. I like to use the market cap as one of the ways I use to evaluate a company based upon its publicly traded size. For example, companies with a larger market cap tend to be more stable and mature. However, this can also mean that there's limited room for growth. Now conversely, companies with a smaller cap tend to have more room to grow because they can be more flexible and agile but they also means that the company is typically younger and may lack some experience. And as a result, still needs to prove itself within the market space, which can mean higher price volatility and more risk. For example, I was talking to one of my coaching students the other day, and we were looking at Coca-Cola Company, stock symbol KO, which you can see is currently trading at $63.21 per share. But what's more interesting, though, is take a look at the market cap. It's $273 billion. So this is obviously a mega cap stock. Now, as I mentioned, companies with a larger market cap tend to be more stable. And as a result, there's less price fluctuation. In fact, that's borne out by the fact that if you look at the beta value, it's 0.56. Now, if you're not familiar with beta, take a look at some of my previous videos. But quickly in a nutshell, um, the beta value is a measure of the expected move in the stock relative to the overall market. So, for example, if the beta value is greater than 1, it means that that the stock is more volatile than the overall market and beta values less than one indicate that the stock has a lower volatility than the overall market. So for example, if this beta value was 1.5, that, that would mean that the stock is one and a half times more likely to have price fluctuation based upon the market. But this value for Coca-Cola at 0.56, it means that it's roughly 50% less likely to have price movement based upon the overall market. Now the third thing you must know is, is the market cap a good size indicator? It's best to understand that the market capitalization of a company really just tells you the size of the company. And it can be used to compare one company to another company even though they may be in different sectors or industries. So the answer is yes, the market cap can tell you the size of a company, but it doesn't tell you whether or not a company is a good investment or a bad investment. Number four, is the market cap more important than the stock price? So remember that the market cap is a function of the current stock price of a company. And it's a useful way to measure the overall value of a company. So rather than compare the prices of two different companies, you can now use market capitalization as a way to compare the overall value of a company against another company. And as long as the number of outstanding shares remains a constant for a company, as the share price fluctuates, then the market capitalization will also fluctuate. So a higher stock price will show up as a higher market capitalization. Similarly, a lower stock price will show a declining market capitalization. Number five, if the stock price of a company changes, does the market cap change on a daily basis as well? The answer is yes. As the stock price changes, the market capitalization also changes as well, which means that market capitalization typically isn't a useful tool in determining future potential of a stock. However, you can look at the trend of a company's market cap as one of the influencing factors when evaluating a company's growth and overall direction. Let's jump back to our example using Coca-Cola, stock symbol KO, and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here we can see 
the market capitalization for the company going back over the last four quarters. We can see that in June of 2021, the market cap was $233 billion. Then in September, the next quarter was 226. The next quarter after that, December of 2021, the market cap was up to 256. And then in this last reported quarter of March of 2022, the market cap was $268 billion. So you can see initially the market cap went down from the third quarter, from the second quarter down to the third quarter. And then it started to recover and we see it increase into the last quarter of 2021 and into the first quarter we also see an increase up to $268 billion. Number six, which one is better for a company? A higher market cap or lower market cap? So in general, I like to think of a company's market capitalization as a reflection of its stage in its business development and growth. Going back to our example using Coca-Cola, this company's been around for a long time. It was founded in 1886, which means it's been in business for 136 years giving this company plenty of time to grow and stabilize. And as a result, this company has captured the lion's share of the soft drink beverage market, which we see in the company's market capitalization of over $270 billion, making this a mega cap stock. Now compare this to a smaller company, say GoPro Incorporated, stock symbol GPRO, which has a market cap of only $924 million, making this a small cap stock. Now I'm sure that some of you are familiar with GoPro, uh, they're a provider of consumer electronics and technology where they develop and sell cameras, mountable and wearable accessories, and also subscription services and software, primarily in the United States, but internationally. Now the company offers cloud connected Hero 10 Black, Hero 9 Black, and Hero 8 Black waterproof cameras. Max, a 30, 360 degree waterproof camera. Now this company has been around a while, but it was only founded in 2002, so making this a 20 year old company a small drop in the bucket when compared to Coca-Cola. And while it is the market leader in this particular industry, it is a relatively young company and its market cap only makes it a small cap company. We just took a look at two different companies, both of them considered leaders in their specific industry and niche. Coca-Cola mega cap stock has a capitalization of over $270 billion, whereas GoPro, a small cap stock, has a market cap of only $970 million. These two companies are a prime example of how different market caps don't necessarily mean better or worse. These companies are both industry leaders and yet are, have very different market caps. What you must know, number seven. Are market cap for a company and the revenue of a company the same thing? No, they're two different things. The market capitalization of a company is very different than the company's revenue. Remember that market capitalization reflects the total value of a company based upon its current share price and the number of outstanding shares. Whereas a company's revenue is the amount of money a company takes in as a result of its sales of both its products and services. Let's go back to our example using Coca-Cola company. Here we can see that the market cap is $274 billion. Next, let's take a look at the revenue for Coca-Cola. And we can see that in 2021, the company had a revenue of $38.73 billion very different than the market capitalization. Okay, wait, I know this video was titled the seven things you must know about market cap, but I just thought of another thing and I wanna throw it in there. So get ready for number eight. And here's number eight. If a company has a shrinking market cap, what does that mean? In order for the market cap of a company to shrink, it means one of two different things. First, it could be that the share price has dropped, resulting in a lower market capitalization, which is generally considered a negative condition when the share price drops. Or the second reason for having a shrinking market cap is because the company has bought back shares from investors, reducing the number of outstanding shares. And by reducing the number of outstanding shares, it increases the value of the remaining shares. So think of it like this. If the demand stays constant, but the supply of outstanding shares has been reduced, well then that's gonna drive the value or share price higher. The market cap is one of the variables that I look at whenever I research and pick my stocks for my options trading. And with the world economy changing every single minute of every single day, it means that the stock markets fluctuate as well. So out of the 5,000 stocks available for options trading in the US stock market, I need to reduce the choices down to the top 10 or 15. And I need to do this every single day. So what's my secret? How do I go from over 5,000 stocks down to the top 10? I start off every trading session using my one button stock screener. It's the one tool I use every day to help me pick my stocks for my options trading. You can download a free copy by visiting simplestockscreener.com. After you download your copy of the one button stock screener, you'll find that it's already set up and pre-configured with some basic screening information, including the market cap setting. 
So get your free copy by visiting simplestockscreener.com. If you stayed around this long, thanks so much. And to reward you, I've got a fun little bonus for you. What is the market value per employee? In 2018, there was some research into the average market value per employee within the United States by sector. This graph shows the results of that study. Before I jump any further into this graphic, let me briefly explain what these numbers represent. So these numbers are taking a look at the market value of a company in relation to the number of people that it employs. Now let's walk through a real example to better illustrate what I'm talking about. And for this, we'll go back to our old friend, Coca-Cola. Here you can see Coca-Cola has a market cap of just over $274 billion. Next, if we take a look at the number of people employed by Coca-Cola, we can see that they're reporting that there are 79,000 full-time employees. So now, let's use these numbers for a quick math calculation. Coca-Cola's market cap is $274 billion, and they employ 79,000 full-time employees. So if we do the math, and we divide $274 billion by the 79,000 employees, the market value per employee is about $3.47 million. So now going back to our graph, we see that we have 10 different sectors, ranging from the industrial sector on the far left to the energy sector on the far right. So the researchers looked at all the companies for each of the different sectors, calculated the market value per employee, and came up with an average value. So this graph shows us the average market value per employee grouped by sector. And they range from a low of $700,000 per employee for the industrial sector to a high of $5.6 million per employee in the energy sector. You might think it's just a curious bit of trivia, this market value per employee. Why would I care about such a thing? Here's one of the reasons why I look at it. It's because when I'm considering investing in a company that's in a particular sector, I like to know how it measures up against other companies in that same sector. I'll walk you through a quick example so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll start by picking a sector. Let's go with something in the middle, say financial services. So this include companies like banks, credit cards, and other financial institutions. Let's take something like Wells Fargo, stock symbol WFC. This company has a market cap of $162,720,000,000. And according to the company profile, they report a total of 243,674 full-time employees. Now let's go ahead and calculate the market value per employee. Wells Fargo's market cap is $162,720,000,000. And their employee count is 243,674 making their market value per employee $667,000, which is another way of saying 0.667 millions of dollars. Now let's go back and take a look to see how Wells Fargo's market value per employee measures up against the rest of the financial services sector. As we zoom in on the chart, we can see that the average market value per employee for those companies in the financial services sector is $1.8 million per employee. And now if you recall, the Wells Fargo market value per employee was $0.667 million. I should quickly point out that this fact is neither good nor bad. It's simply just a data point that I may want to consider researching further to understand why Wells Fargo's market value per employee is significantly lower than the sector's average market value per employee. Well, so there you go. There's the seven things you need to know about market cap. Well, actually it's eight. Well, Really, it's nine because I actually gave you an extra bonus in there. So those are the nine things you need to know about market cap. Well, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And just remember, market cap is only one of the things that I look at whenever I'm picking stocks for my options trading. But I make my job a lot easier by using my one button stock screener, which you can download for free. So don't forget to get your copy by going to simplestockscreener.com.